Hello everybody and welcome back to The Last Door, season number two. Okay, now I know I teased you with this last time and I neglected to deliver, so sorry about that, but let's finally enter the manor's basement. Here we go, let's see what he's got hidden down here. Uh, well, not any lights by the looks of it, no. It's completely dark in here. I feel a cold draft coming from the front. Okay, it is insanely dark, I can't see anything to the right to be honest. Uh, it's too dark, I need something to light the way. Okay. Um, okay, actually, we've got a matchbox. Can we light the... Can we just use the match? Okay, we just used the match. Brilliant. Okay, let's go. So, it's like a... Seriously? That was the shortest match in the world, but... Okay, he's got another one. Brilliant. Uh, can't examine that. There's a tunnel or something there. Oh, no, it might not be a tunnel. There's, what, these barrels or something? Uh, <laughs> Alright, match number four. I'm struggling with this one. That might have been number five, I don't know. Uh, it's a big place. Let's see. Okay, there's another one. What have we got? Ooh! Ooh, please tell- I've run out of matches. No! No, I wanted to examine what that thing was on the wall. I'm hoping it's actually one of the mechanisms. Wait, so now we're stuck down here? What was that? I can still move around here, but I suppose I don't have a choice. Um, okay, that that wasn't me. Let let's go left. Yeah, let's let, let's head back. I don't like the sound of this. I think there might be something down here with me. And um, I, I don't know. Let's let's come back with a candle or something, or invent the flashlight. I, what was that? That didn't sound good. Oh. I... I've fallen through a hole. Where am I? The flow of air is stronger here. Oh, hang on, is that... I think that might be a ladder over there? What's this? It looks like a component of some sort of machine. Okay, can we take it? Yeah? Maybe I can find out where to use it. Well, I'm hoping... Actually, it's a lever. Okay, I'm hoping it might fit into the machine that's in the attic. Maybe we can finish that bit off. Okay. But we have a light source here, that's the most important thing, really. A working lantern. Perfect! Please take it with you. Yes, now I can get out of here safely. Right, yeah, this is the bit from the beginning of the episode. This part of the tunnel is blocked by a cave-in. The underground tunnel is not accessible from here. I should go back. I'm wondering if we have to get through there somehow. Like, can we... Do we blow this up? Can we blow the cave-in up? That's probably very unsafe, but maybe it's a... Maybe it's a possibility? And yes! A ladder, of course. Well, we knew that, but he's just discovered it, so there we go. Um, so the lever. Great. Right, so let's climb up the ladder, hopefully bringing the lantern with us. Hey, there you go, now I can see up here. And I shouldn't have to rely on using so many matches. Wait, how did that happen? I was walking to the left! This guy got really, really lost. <laughs> anyway, let's see, can I examine this? I can. Good, 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 good. Right, is it a... It's a mechanism of some sort, good. So, we're going to have to twist this 180 degrees, I think, from that to this, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't think it matters. Hopefully, all the statues are now raising their masks above their heads. So, I think we can pay a trip to the backyard. That's pretty great. And yeah, these aren't tunnels. They're, they are more like, you know, nooks and crannies and alcoves and stuff. But what are these? Are they barrels or...? Uh, the bottom of pillars or columns or something, maybe? There's a lot of them. Got some rubble, some boulders and rocks and stuff. There's... hang on. This old furniture has been left here to rot. Okay. And that's all we can say about that. And there's nothing else here that really takes our interest? Okay. Well, that might be it for the basement, to be honest. We do have a lever, though, and I think we can now go to the backyard and have a look at those statues again. And seeing as we're so close, let's uh, let's do that in a moment. If we cannot access the tunnel mentioned in Professor Wright's log, how can we find the missing parts of his research? I must talk to Kaufman about... this. Couldn't you have just squeezed that into the last bit? I mean, come on! I was able to use the key to explore the basement. There is a large hole in the floor. One side of the hole may lead to some sort of tunnel, but it was completely covered in rocks and debris, so I could not tell for sure. Covered in debris? 
It sounds as if the Professor succeeded in blocking the entrance to this underground area. Hmm. It is unfortunate for us. I have made some progress of my own, my friend. I... <laughs> Again, can't you squeeze that next to the eye? Uh, I think this could help elucidate the next step in our search. Have a look. Okay, what's he found? He has found a blue rectangle. I assume a book? Uh, today, a meeting finally took place. All right. In the library. Okay, uh... You see, Mr. Wright, our organization is keenly interested in your research. We could reach an agreement to fund this project. But first, we need to know the details. I understand. The main factor is the condition of the test subject. How open he is to suggestion. As you know, only the human mind can open a physical passage to the other side. So a complete, absolute darkness will be required for the experience to result. A secluded place, completely isolated. A place that can only bring thoughts of what may be hiding in the dark. I have the perfect location in mind. But in total darkness and seclusion, how could the results of the experiment be studied or confirmed? That is precisely where your organization can provide help. I've designed a special device that would allow me to listen from a safe distance, but I lack the means to manufacture it myself. That we could arrange. But there is one last thing I would like to know. How would the experience be triggered? By means of a chemical compound of some kind? Do you mean a serum? Not at all. That would be of no elegance whatsoever. The trigger is the mind itself, the emotion known as terror. The primal fear that still survives in the depths of our mind, from the times humans were mere beasts. That which allows us to open a physical passage beyond the veil of rational thought. Primal terror is the key that we will use to open the last door. Ooh. Nice little segue into saying the name of the game as well, okay. Could this organization be... The playwright? It may be, my friend. If so, then we are closer to the truth than we thought. But in this room, I have been able to find only some fragments of information. Discarded material. It looks as if the main bulk of documents were moved to this, uh, from this room and hidden somewhere else. The basement tunnel. That seems the most reasonable conclusion. But access to that place is lost, is it not? The entrance was sealed. There may be another access that we do not know about. If we could find and use the device that the professor mentions in his log, I believe we could shed some light on this matter. Now, I've got to wonder if the device upstairs in the attic is that device. And do we have the missing component? I think we do. And seeing as it's next door, before we go to the backyard, let's just... Let's just pop upstairs, shall we? I love this. I really do like where this is going. We're getting closer. Ever so slightly. Ever so slightly closer. Actually, can we just confirm something? Let's just have a look out the window. Can I see the statues from here? Yes. And it looks to me like all of their masks are off, so that's brilliant. The way to the grave should be, like, opened or something, right? We'll go down there in a sec, but... First of all, let's try the lever with this. Hey, it works. I think it will work now. Okay. Let's take another look. How does this work? So that's the lever. And these are, like, dials, aren't they? I see. Um, okay. Right? It's like I'm tuning into something. Like the first radio station or something? <laughs> yeah. You're listening to Classic FM. The sound? Do my ears deceive me? Is that a piano melody? I must seek Kaufman at once! <laughs> He's gotta hear this. Not to state the obvious, but it sounds as if someone is still down there, playing the piano, of all things. But how is that even remotely possible? I do not know, but this means something important to us. It means there is another entrance to the underground tunnel, and that we must find it. But we've run out of leads. You did not find anything of use in the archive, and Professor Wright continues to mutter incoherently about childhood memories. You must hypnotize the Professor, mein lieber Freund. We are running out of options. This might be the only way to find the answers we seek. So we're going to hypnotize him? I'm going to hypnotize him? Right now, apparently! <laughs> Look at this candle. Fix your eyes upon it. 
Your body is as light as a feather. Everything around you fades. You are entering a dark, endless void. Wait, you're using a candle? Where was that five minutes ago? That could have helped me out in the basement quite considerably. <laughs> you are getting sleepy. Just sway it back and forth. <laughs> or just give it to him, I guess. Is that safe? <laughs> Can we trust him with an open flame? I don't know. He's going to burn the place down, isn't he? Listen to my voice. Where are you? Oh, it's a lantern now, it looks like. I guess it's worked! Okay. A great number of trees surround me. The sun is setting soon. I can go north and west. Okay. Wait, hang on, what? This is like a text adventure game now! That's pretty cool. I don't have to type anything in, but uh, let's see. North or west? Um, let's let's go west. I can go elsewhere, apparently, but let's let's go west. This is cool. I didn't expect this. I am on the beach. There is a huge rock here. Many birds circle in the sky overhead. To the north, I see the shore. To the west, there is a person. Uh, okay. I'm more interested in the person, to be honest. So let's head west. Yeah. As soon as I approach, the figure darts between the rocks as though it were frightened of me. Uh, and that is that. Apparently, we can't really investigate further. Let's let's go back then. Okay. The north is the shore. The west. Are the person's back. Can we go west again? Just out of interest. Oh, we can't. All right. All right. So let's head north towards the shore. I stand beside the shore. The water wets my shoes and all around me lie the wrecks of ships. To the north, something floats in the water. To the east, I can see the edge of the forest. Uh, okay. I'm more interested again in what's in the water, so... North? It's a body. A body floats in the water. I will not look upon its face. Why? Strange. Okay, go back. So, yeah, on the shore again. Can I go north? Nah, just like with the person before, I can't go back to examine it a second time. So, okay, let's go east this time. Towards the forest, right? I stand beside a waterfall. It is not water that falls, but mud and rock from a great height. They fall and fall into a bottomless abyss. Behind the waterfall, to the east, lies a tunnel. To the west, I see the edge of the forest. Uh, well, we don't want to go back on ourselves. I say, let's keep heading towards the tunnel. So, through the waterfall to the east? Or past it, at the very least. There we go. I'm in a dark tunnel. Oscar is here as well. He is upset. He yells at me. He begs me to stop. Who is Oscar? Hmm. Uh, okay. The tunnel divides into many passages. I can go north, south, and west. Ooh, let's see. Well, west would lead out, I would think, so it's going to be north or south. Um, let's go... north? There's that piano music again. I am in a large open space with a piano. Something stands next to the piano. I can't see it clearly. Its face. The tunnel stretches into the dark. Walk down the tunnel. There are no more options. It is a very small room. In the center lies a deep pit. A ladder goes down. It is so dark. Down there. It lies. It waits. I will not continue. I must go back. No, not an option. Go down the ladder. I cannot. I can hear it with me. Its breath. Dear God, I must flee. You must continue, apparently. It waits for me. It waits down there. What is it, exactly? Oh, he's gone down the ladder. Well done. I cannot see. It is pitch dark. I... I can feel its breath. It is here. It is with me. Shit. <laughs> oh. What was that? Oh, and you're back in the room. <laughs> Enough. We went too far, my friend. You're right. 
I did not think he would react this way. You did well by stopping the trance, Kaufman. I think it would be best if we leave it for today. Let us return to the inn. Reflect tonight on what we have witnessed here. Tomorrow, let's discuss the next step in our investigation. Okay. And again, we're automatically going there, I guess? Yeah? So it's a new location, another, another area of Wickport. Oh, come on, I really wanted to have a look at the backyard! Oh well, uh, come in. Kaufman, are you alright? Worry not, Wakefield. I'm just feeling a bit feeble. It must be all this cold and humidity. <coughs> Nothing serious. I would like to know your opinion about what we heard during yesterday's session. Do you remember anything that could help us in our search? Uh, a few things, apparently. Four things. The underground tunnel, the seaside, a mysterious figure, and a man shouting at Professor Wright. Let's start from the top and go down. Yes, the underground tunnel has left a deep impression on Professor Wright's subconscious. I agree. The horror he experienced at the end of the session was far too intense to derive solely from his imagination. It speaks of some trauma. What about the seaside? Maybe the entrance to this tunnel is somewhere closer to the coast. Possibly. What about this mysterious figure? The one that sort of darted away. Yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. An unknown figure with no visible face, the floating body, and the person near the rocks. The one beside the piano. <clears throat> yes, indeed. But I'm afraid it is too soon to unveil the true meaning of those images. What about the man shouting at Professor Wright? Yes. I cannot remember his name. No, I do. It's Oscar, wasn't it? Very good. It was Oscar. We should attempt to find him. He may know something about Professor Wright's fears. If we can find this man, I am sure we will shed some light upon the mystery. Why don't you go to the village and try to figure out something about Oscar? <coughs> my apologies, but I must stay here and recover my strength. Okay. Again, I'm getting the better side of the deal. So, yeah, Wickport. Um, we're at the Wickport Inn, and we can go to the town square. Are you telling me we can't go back to the manor? Well, at least not right now. We've, we've got to go back, though, at some point. Don't tell me I've missed my chance to have a look at that grave and stuff. Oh well, uh, to the town square then. Let's have a look around the town. Okay, this is cool. I've kept the lantern as well. That could come in pretty useful. And the cloth. Matchbox is just a matchbox right now. There's no matches, right? Uh, what we got here? The Fisherman's Lodge. Okay. So, can we go in? Apparently so. Let's give it a go. Okay. Few people in here. Right, here we go. I've got to prepare my voice for this. Let's see, who are we going to start with? What about you? This lady is dressed rather elegantly for someone who came to drink in a place like this. And I can't speak to her, apparently. Is this guy just talking to a bottle or something? I can talk to him, though. Good morning. Let me drink in peace. Are you a ship captain? Why? What's it to you? Does I look like a captain? Uh, I, I don't know, actually. Your hat? That's a hat? I thought that might have been a hairstyle, honestly. But yeah, your hat, your coarse skin, your hands, or your three earrings? Let's go with your hat. Because of the hat you're wearing. Heh, <laughs> a hat don't make a captain, Towney. You can buy a hat like this at any flea market in England. Okay, your coarse skin. Weathered by years of salt and wind. You met many folk in Whitport yet? It's common enough around these parts. Alright. Your hands? Calloused by years of knotting rope and reeling in line. Any fisherman has hands like these. <sighs> Fair enough. What about the three earrings, then, for fuck's sake? Uh, you've doubled the three capes, is that right? Indeed I have. Good Hope, Leowin, and Horn. Therefore I hold the right to stand before kings and to piss against the wind. <laughs> if I dies in the sea, these three rings will pay my wake. But no, that'll not happen now. Do you mean you'll not set sail again? I love to see more than anything. It's my passion, my freedom, and my life. But there are many things about him that we do not know. There are, far from the coast, in the deep dark, things we are still unprepared to behold. Believe me, those things await deep down. Have you seen any of those things? No, but... You may have heard one or two of the stories the fishermen tell about things seen out here. It is naught but tales for young'uns. Mere superstition from men too cowardly to face the dark. Any good seaman knows that in a strong wind, a stretched rope can shake and sing. I, myself, have mistaken such keening for the wail of a child. But there was one time. One time it was nothing of the sort. 
Then the sea howled. It was not thunder. Not a strong wave clashing with a ship. No. It was like a voice. It spoke to me in a language I cannot describe. A sound muttered by a living something. A call unlike anything I'd ever heard before. And I understood. Alright. Let's just indulge him. Uh, what did you understand? I understood there was no more freedom for me. That the sea now had other lords. And whoever they were. I did know they had not share it. Okay, what happened then? As I navigated back to shore, I lost control of my ship in a great storm. The rocks of the cliffs did the rest. I do not know where the remains of my dear Augustine ended up with the passing of years and tides. I looked for them once, for many moons. But all I found was this bar in the bottom of an empty glass. I've never returned to the shore since. May she forgive me. Now leave me be. Uh, I will leave you alone. Okay. Yeah. You have the gratitude of me and my whiskey. All that blathering worked up a rat's or first. Right. Apologies for my accents there. It went from sort of like, uh... uh I, I don't know. I sounded like Sean Bean for a time. Uh, there was a Wurzel sort of maybe even a Brummy accent there. I don't know. I've got to kind of pick one. And then by the way they speak, I change it. So you got to give me a little bit of leeway there. Anyway, that's all we can talk about with him. What about him, for instance? Or well, these two. Uh, they've just given me a suspicious look. Probably because I'm a townie, right? They don't like the looks of me. What about you? Can I speak to you? Good morning. You want a drink? Uh, man sitting in the corner, or a man named Oscar. Let's just talk about the man in the corner, actually. What's with the man on the corner? Fred? You could ignore him. He's a sad, lonely drunk. <laughs> okay. I will, then. Uh, what about a man named Oscar, more importantly? Do you know a man called Oscar? You mean Father Oscar? You can find him in the church when he's not in here. He's right outside. Really? Okay. Oh, hang on. Before we, before we leave, have you met Professor Wright? The Professor? Sure. Saw her every other day as a young'un. Always involved in the village. He was la di all right, but folk respected him. He got stuck in. Didn't last, though. Shut himself away. Started getting visitors from out of town. He stopped coming to the village eventually. Last I heard, he's gone crazy. None of us knows for sure, though. Been years since I last saw him. Fair enough. I must leave. And leave my pitiful accents behind. Godspeed. Alright, there we go. Okay, so... Father Oscar. In a church just outside? Sounds pretty promising. Um, just want to make sure I'm not missing anything, though. Bottles of rum, dark beer, and a couple of taps of pale ale. Okay. What we got here? Uh, the wheel from the helm of a ship. Brilliant. Perhaps a trinket from the owner's days as a ship's helmsman. Perhaps. A few photos, I guess. Old pictures of the village's inhabitants. What's that guy looking at, anyway? An old poster of a local traditional sport. Wouldn't happen to be fishing, would it? <laughs> probably not. Okay, let's leave. Let's look for a church. Let's look for Father Oscar. It's probably the same guy, right? It's probably the guy that Professor Wright mentioned. Okay, I guess this is just a, a box standard house. We can't go in there. Uh, no. Oh, hello. We can talk to a window. Or so no, we can't. <laughs> the window is closed shut. Never mind. I guess they really don't like the looks of me. That's a shame. Um, snow all but covers the window. Evidently, no one has been here to clear it in a very long time. It is too frosted over to see inside. All right. Okay. Oh, we can go that way. Oh, oh, this looks like a big church door. Is it a big church door? It is. It's a big locked church door. Well, no, sorry, it's not locked, but it is closed and I can't get in. Okay, um... Let's come back later on. Let's go this way. Maybe I can go around the back. Oh, go to the beach. One of those. Let's see, what we got? Hang on. Some abandoned wooden planks. Perhaps they're here for the repair of local fishing boats. Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, well, I can't take them with me or anything. Okay, fair enough. Can we go to the right at all? Nope, rocks blocking my way. There is like a little rowboat here. And some rope, I think. An old rotting boat rests on the shore. The name Providence is written on the side. That's probably a nice little nod to H.P. Lovecraft, because as you might know, he lived in Providence, Rhode Island for a major part of his life. Uh, might not be, though. Might just be a funny coincidence. Is that an oar? 
it's part of the old rotting boat apparently so I thought I might be able to take it I don't know we can keep going to the left though what have we got here uh, fallen branch or tree trunk or something loads of rocks what's that oh hang on what's this oh an old ship completely wrecked and what is this specifically it does stand out an old rusty bronze bell typical of a seafaring vessel it is engraved with the name Augustine Oh, it's the same one the guy was talking about in the Fisherman's Lodge? Can we... We can take it with us. Hey, okay. Someone may be able to tell me more about it. I think I know who that someone could be. Right, but that, that boat is blocking us from carrying on down the coast. So over there. Far in the distance, I can see a lonely tree bent by the sea wind. Okay. Alright, so we got the... The Augustine Bell. Yeah... Well, I know that the, uh, the barmaid told me I should probably ignore Fred, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to give him this bell. Window's open again. Can I talk? No? Okay. Do I have to sneak up on this window or something? What's going on? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. I assume this goes back to the map screen? Okay, it does. Good. When are we going to get a chance to go back there? I really want to go to the backyard to find out what that was all about. Oh well, to the town square at the moment. I just have to sort of grin and bear it. Back into the fisherman's lodge, here we go. Right, um... It was you, wasn't it? Right. Let's see how he reacts to seeing this. Why, that bell's from Augustine! Why, Augustine? Where on earth did you find it? I found it on the beach, near the shipwreck. Thought I'd never see it again. I'll clean it and make it shine anew. Wickport Beach? Ah, oh, Beach? Well, I must go. I must go straight away. Oh, to be reunited with my poor Augustine. What will remain of her? No, no, I dare not go. Oh, but I must. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> again, my voice changes. I can't nail that guy's voice. I just can't do it. I don't know why. Um, but off he goes. Did he leave anything behind? Can I take the whiskey? Can I take the bottle? No? Ah! He wasn't sitting on anything. Um... Well, that was that. So I assume he's down at the beach. Maybe I can talk to him again? I suppose that's the next move. Again? Right, here we go. I oh, come on! <laughs> uh, oh, there he <laughs> Blending in very well, actually. Hello. Neither the cracks of your old, nor your flaking paint. None of it matters. You are beautiful as ever, Augustine. Today we will watch the sun set together. Good sir, I cannot put into words what a great service you have rendered this drunken knave. Just as you, a stranger, have brought me to my lost treasure. May this old sailor's spyglass, in whatever way it can, help light the way to yours. Take it. It's a gift from the art. Brilliant, we've got a telescope. What the fuck do we want a telescope for? Can we, tell you what, can we use it to have a look at the tree? No? That's the only thing I can really think of right now, and no, that is not an option. Why would we need a telescope? What do we need to see up close? Or from a distance, I suppose. I can't think of anything. Maybe maybe I have no use for it at the moment, I don't know. Um... Okay. Let's, let's go back. Let's check the church again. If it's still not open, I might end the video and ask for your help, honestly, because I'm not honestly seeing any way to progress at the moment. Back up we go. Okay. Come on. It's closed. Shit. Well, I guess I can go back to the inn and talk to Calvin about the telescope I've just found, but to be honest, I don't think that's what he really wants to see. That's not exactly why we're here in the first place, is it? So, maybe not. I guess I could do that. I don't know, I'll have to think about this. Um... Okay, that's where I'm going to end this video. Thank you very much for watching part 6 of The Last Door, season 2. Hope to see you back in part 7, where hopefully, fingers crossed, we track down Father Oscar. See you then. Did we just use the match? Okay, we just used the match. Brilliant. Okay, let's go. So, is that good? Seriously? Primal Terror is the key that we will use to open The Last Door. Ooh. We can talk to a window. Or so. No, we can't. <laughs> oh, but I must. Good day to you, sir. 
<laughs> Again, my voice changes. I can't nail that guy's voice. I just can't do it. I don't know why.